Hey, what's going on everybody? And today I'm going to show you how to do tap war using Swift 2 with Xcode. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let's jump right into Xcode, create a new Xcode project. This will be a single view application product name. Again, this will be tap war. So just do that, not tap wart. Uh, language will be Swift, device is universal, click next and create. Now we have this created, so let's go ahead and make this a bit bigger and head right into the main dot storyboard. Now in this, essentially what we're doing here is going to place a button at the top right here and also a button at the bottom. And then we're going to be tapping those buttons to in order to actually win the game. So in order for us to do this, let's just click and drag a button onto the top left corner like so, and just click that, click and drag that out just so it's about halfway. It doesn't really matter as we fix that later on in programming, but just try to get it close. And we also can just copy and paste that button so that we have two buttons and just place that right down below. Again, the sizing doesn't matter as we will fix that later. And now we want these buttons to conform to all the screen sizes that we use. So if it's on an iPhone 6S Plus, it's going to work properly on that. Or if it's on an iPad, it's going to work properly on that. So we're going to right click or control click and drag from this button over to our view. And we're going to give this top one our leading, trailing, and a vertical spacing to top layout guide, then center horizontally in the container and also give it equal widths to the scene around it. So now we're going to click enter and that will add all those constraints. And your border should be yellow or red or whatever it is, it'll fix later. And now we can take this bottom button and do the exact same. So we're going to right click or control click and drag it from that button over to our view. We're going to say leading, trailing, vertical spacing to bottom layout guide, center horizontally in container, and we're also going to equal widths like so. So now those are the constraints for each of the individual buttons. Now we need to take this button, we're going to right click or control click and drag from this button over to the top button, and we're going to say equal heights. So now we're going to give them equal heights no matter what. And lastly, the constraint that we're going to add is right click or control click and drag from this button over to the top button. We're going to add vertical spacing. Now with this constraint, you'll see that there is a slight gap. So we're going to go down here to our button, go over to our constraints, and we're going to edit our constraint that we just made. So this is going to be the top space to button, this one right here. We're going to edit that and make it zero. That way there is no space in between both of the buttons. So if we were to build and run this right now, you will see that it will conform nicely to everything. And actually you will not be able to see that right now, so let's go ahead and add some background color to it. So let's go to the top button title, and we're gonna go up here to the attributes inspector and delete the title inside of that and also the bottom button, delete the title. And then we're also gonna go up here to the top button and just add some background color. So I'm gonna make it a nice blue color. You can of course make it wherever you want. Our background color of the bottom one will just be a red color. Again, this white line should be gone as we added that constraint that mm, there is no spacing in between those. And if you set it up properly, there is no more spacing in between each of those buttons. Now let's continue on. So let's open up our assistant editor right here and we're going to right click or control click and drag from our top button and we're just going to name it. So this will be my top button, but of course you can call it whatever you want. Connect that. And then we're also gonna go over down here to our bottom button and we're going to just connect that and call it our bottom button. Again, connect that. Now with these buttons, we also want some things to happen when you click the button. So we're going to right click or control click and drag again. We're going to add an action. So connection type action. The name of this will just be my blue BTN action. You can of course call it whatever you want. And then we can of course do this with a red button. So I'm going to click and drag again from that red button, go to connection type. This will be action. And the name of this, I'm just going to call this my red button action. Again, you can call that whatever you want. Now with this action, we actually want to change some labels. So let's go ahead, close our assistant editor, and let's add some labels onto our scene. So just click and drag a label right onto your scene like so, and we can put that right there-ish. You can put it wherever you want. And then we also need this label right up here, like so. And now with these labels, we also want to add some constraints in between those. So we're going to click and drag from the label right here to the blue label, and we're gonna add some horizontal spacing, like so. We're also gonna do this with our top label and just add some vertical spacing. And we also want to center it in the scene, so we're going to click and drag from the label over to our view and say center horizontally in the container and do that with our bottom label as well. And now we need to connect these labels up to our scene, so let's just go up here to our assistant editor. We're going to click and drag from the label over to our view controller over to here and we're gonna name our label, so this will be my blue label. You can of course call that whatever you want. Connect that and our red label will just be right down here. Again, red label. 
connect. And now let's actually close our assistant editor and we're just going to head right into view, the view controller.swift. Now in this, what I want to do is actually add some scoring. So let's go right up here and I'm gonna say var score will be equal to zero. So this score is an integer and we're gonna be able to change it via these actions right down here. So now let's go into our viewed load and right inside of our viewed load, we wanna say our score is equal to zero. And then we also want to set our labels. So we're gonna say blue label dot text will be equal to open close quotation mark slash open close parentheses and inside of this this will be my score and you can do this with your red label as well so I'm going to say red label dot text will be equal to open close quotation marks slash open close parentheses and inside of this this again will be score now with the blue label that we have we want to go back to our main dot storyboard as you can see the person is going to be facing from this direction so we don't want this label to be facing this guy we want it to be facing the person that's actually fighting so we need to go here to our view controller dot swift and we're going to go right down here to our blue label and say blue label dot transform equals CG affine transform make rotation and we're going to give it the angle of 3.14 or pi or 180 degrees. So now the blue label will be upside down. Now we actually want to add some actions to our buttons. So we're going to say blue button action. We want our score to go up by one. So I'm just going to say score plus plus. So that'll add one to the score every time the blue button action is pressed. And then we also want to go down here to our red button and we're going to say score minus minus. And that'll take away some score. And now with this, we also want to update the labels every time. So we're going to go up here to our viewed load and we're going to just paste that right into our blue button action and our red button action. And now if we were to build and run this, we should actually see what's going on. So as you can see, I can press the blue button right up here and that'll change the score accordingly. And I can press the red button down here and that'll change the score accordingly as well. Now, what we want to do here is say, if the red player reaches negative 10 or something like that, they have won the game. And now in the other case, if the blue player hits 10, they win the game. So let's go right down here underneath our red button action. And in here, we're going to create a function that just says test score. So we're going to test the score, see where we're at, and see who wins or not. So now we have this function and we want to say if the score is greater than or equal to 10, then we want this to happen. Otherwise, so let's go right down here and we can say else if the score is less than or equal to negative 10, then we can continue on and do something else. Now, what do we want to happen in these cases? Well, let's head right back to our main.storyboard. And inside of here, I want something to pop up that says you have lost or that you have won. So I'm going to click and drag a button onto my scene and just click and drag that all the way out across the scene like so. And now also with this button, I'm just going to change the background color to something else that way it's not too confusing. So now we have this button right here and I'm actually going to delete the text inside of it like so. And this button, is essentially our end scene. So what we need to do here is let's open up our assistant editor and we're going to right click or control click and drag from this button over to our view controller and this will be my end scene. Again, you can call this whatever you want but it, this will be my end scene. Now also with this, I want some labels to pop up. So I have some labels. I'm just going to click and drag that onto my scene like so. And these labels will say, say something along the lines of winner or loser. So we have these labels right there and I'm just going to center the text. Then I'm going to copy and paste that label and put it right back up here like so. And now we also need to name these labels so that we can edit them. So we're going to right click or control click and drag from the labels over to our view controller. And this will just be my top end label. Again, you can call that whatever you want. And this bottom label will be my bottom end label. So again, this will be my bottom end label and connect. And also lastly, before we continue on, we want to add some action to this end scene button. So I'm going to right click or control click and drag from my end scene button over to my view controller dot swift connection type will be an action. And the name of this will be my end scene action. Again, you can call it whatever you want. Now, before we go on in the end scene action and starting to do things, we actually wanna make it so the end scene action can be seen when we lose the game. And when the game starts, we don't want it to be seen. So in the view did load right up here, we're just going to say end scene dot hidden will be equal to true. So as soon as the view loads, the end scene will be hidden. And also with this, we want our top end label dot hidden 
equal to true as well. And we also want our bottom end label dot hidden equal to true. So that's pretty much just how we hide and show our labels. Now we can also copy and paste this right into our if statements. So right down here inside of the test score, we're gonna say if the score is greater than or equal to 10, we're going to just paste that right in there and change all of these to false. And lastly, we can go down here to our end scene action, and we're just going to paste it right in there so that everything is hidden when we click the end scene. And also going back up here to our test score, we can copy and paste all this stuff into our if the score is less than or equal to negative 10, as it, we want it to do the same thing. Now inside of test score, if the score is greater than or equal to 10, that means the top person has won and the bottom person has lost. So we need to go down here and say top end label dot text will be equal to, and we're gonna make this equal to our winner as they have won that round. And then now we also need to go down here and say our bottom end label dot text is going to be equal to loser. And now we can just take these, copy, paste that right down below and just switch the text around. So this will be loser. And then the last one will be winner like so. Now another thing you can see is, again, this label is pointing downward, so let's go up here to our viewed load, and we're just going to go right down here and say top end label dot transform equals CG affine transform make rotation, and this will be 3.14 again. And now if we were to build and run this, we should have our fully functioning game. So as you can see, I'm the red player, I'm playing, and as soon as I hit negative 10, or not, oh right. <laughs> Now it actually looks like I forgot to actually call this test score function that we created. So let's go up here to our red button action and just type in test score like that. And we also need to do that with our blue button action. So it's going to test the score on both of them. And now if we were to build and run this, you can see that I'm the red player, I start playing and as soon as I hit negative 10, it loads up with the scene. Oh, and I forgot to add constraints. So let's head back. And the constraints on this one is really easy. So we're going to right click or control click and drag from my end scene over to the view. And we're going to say equal width, equal height, center vertically and center horizontally. That's all you need. And also with the label here, we're going to click and drag over to the view. And we're going to say center horizontally and also vertical spacing to top layout guide. And then with this bottom label here, we're going to do the same. So again, right click and then go up here to our view. This will be center horizontally and vertical spacing to bottom layout guide. And that should do everything properly. And it also looks like, as you can see by these orange things right here, that it's going to place the label in a smaller position. And that's okay, but I'm going to show you how to fix that. So you just click and drag from the label to the label, and we're going to set the height and the width to what it is set at. And we're going to do that with our top label width and height. And now that is everything that we needed to do for the end scene. So let's build and run this. And now I'm playing the game. As soon as I hit this red one, you can see that the blue guy is the winner and this person down here is the loser. And as soon as I just tap on the screen, it'll play the game again. But as you can see, the score did not reset. So let's head right back to here and we're gonna go to our end scene action. Score is equal to zero. And also with this, we wanna update the labels as well. So let's go right up here to the place where it updates labels and we're just going to copy and paste blue label.txt equals score, red label.txt equals score. Paste that right down there. And now if we were to build and run this, and now if I was the red person, I can just keep clicking until I hit negative 10. I win the game, so then I press again, and that starts the game over, and our score is reset. And I can play as the blue person and win the game and do the exact same. And the winner and loser is switched around. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, be sure to hit that like button down below. And if you wanna see more tutorials like this from me in the future, be sure to subscribe. If you have any game recommendations, be sure to leave that down in the comment section down below as it inspires a lot of the things that I do. Anyway, I will see you in the next one.